As the fact of the matter is, if the Habs had made the playoffs, none of that would have happened. <laughs> of course, uh, you know, uh, hockey is a religion in Montreal. There's other stuff too on religion. You know, religions uh, have had sort of a hard time, so I suggested this is what we might do with St. Peter's in Rome. <laughs> I mean, after all, you know, the new cathedrals are Mac stores. Uh, you see everybody sort of gathered there. So technology, uh, you know, a lot of us are Mac nuts, so... <laughs> I'm going to end up being an app within a couple of years, apparently. <laughs> you know, and it's interesting uh, because I can put up these cartoons on my app, and I don't even know if I'm ever going to need the permission of editors anymore. It's going to—I kind of like—I'm embracing this technology stuff. I don't even have to show it to an editor. Get a few advertisers. Anyway, we'll see how all that goes. I'll keep you posted on that. Rick and I, in our next book signing, we're going to a bookstore to sign Kindles and iPads. <laughs> and. There's no God, only Google. Okay, so uh, Stephen Harper <laughs> now has his majority. Uh, the conservative. I did a contest in the Gazette of a name, an am, animal that you sh should feel represents each political party. And overwhelming choice for the Tories was Weasel. So <laughs> we did a whole series on that. Uh, Tom Mulcair is giving us hope in terms of being a really good uh, opposition leader. And this guy is coming down the track, of course, <laughs> Justin Trudeau. On an off day, I'll do stuff on uh, Arab Spring, uh, whatever it happens to be, or on the states. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> this was Thanksgiving last year. Quebec is really my bread and butter, and you know, I started out, this is a, probably the most famous cartoon I've done of, okay, everybody take a value, when Levesque was elected in 76, but then the PQ was elected again, uh, you know, but a very different sort of feeling just this last September. So I'd done, okay, everybody take a value, so I did Pauline Merouin uh, saying to a soft nationalist, uh, <laughs> how about a Viagra? So, <laughs> So what goes around comes around. We have a lot of fun with this stuff. Uh, and of course, the, uh, <laughs> the English threat to Quebec culture. I even drew Pauline Merois uh, for Halloween dressed up as an Anglo. So. <laughs> Leads me to my, one of my favorite stories uh, uh, recently about a cartoon. I'll just walk you through it to close the, the, the presentation. Uh, speaking of royalty, uh, you know, the Queen really is on a roll recently with the, the Diamond Jubilee and, uh, and Charles uh, had a very successful <laughs> tour of Canada. <laughs> they seem to fit right in, note the double-double there. But right after he was elected, uh, Obama, Michelle Obama and Barack Obama went to visit the Queen. It was sort of something you had to do. And it was on television and they gathered for the usual photo op. But then didn't Michelle Obama, the very tall Michelle Obama, put her arm around the Queen? She touched her. And as you know, we, we just don't do that sort of thing. But then the Queen, the very short Queen, what did she do? Uh, she put her arm around <laughs> Michelle Obama. I live for moments like this. When I saw this on Facebook, I couldn't resist drawing, I guess, my favorite cartoon of the last 10 years. Emphasis. Thanks very much. I would like to uh, to start, and we we um, um, uh, I would, I'm going to turn this over in a few minutes um, to uh, any questions or comments that we might have from our our, our tiny and intimate audience tonight. <laughs> Subdued and quiet though you are, um, but you know where I'd like to to start is is by asking um, each of you to describe what the other one does. Rick, how would you describe Terry Mosher? 
Well, I, I, I don't know if I could describe what he does exactly, but when I'm asked to describe what I do, I often evoke Terry because, you know, it's very trendy now to say uh, that young people especially get their, their news from TV shows like mm -hmm. mine. Mm -hmm. And in America, there's always polls that like, oh, 80% of young people say they get their news from Jon Stewart and they don't get it from any news. And, uh, and there's similar numbers in Canada and it freaks out the news people altogether. But I actually don't believe it's true at all mm -hmm. because I don't... I believe that uh, people do watch shows like mine, and mm -hmm. they do watch shows like Colbert, but I always use the analogy of Terry that if you, it's like the editorial cartoon in a newspaper. Yes. There's no such thing as a consumer of news, I don't believe, who just opens a newspaper, reads the editorial cartoon, mm -hmm. and then puts it down, mm -hmm. and they feel like they're informed. Mm -hmm. You know, we do yeah. the punchline. Yeah. And you have to know the setup, and the setup comes from the news, yes. and we deliver the punchline. And I think that, that we're similar in that sense, and I think Terry's obviously a master because he does it like, it's like a punch, yeah. and it happens in, it's an instantaneous yeah. uh, reaction yeah. that you have. Whereas with me, I do a rant, and, and you know, the rants are famous for being 90 seconds, mm -hmm. and it's tough to get a rant in 90 seconds, but Terry does the same thing in one second. Yeah. And uh, so there's some more similarities and differences probably. Yeah, yeah. Terry? I think what Rick does, is, actually I'm gonna let him tell, give the parallel. We were talking backstage before about about what it is that, that makes Canadian Canadian uh, humorist so good and so plentiful. And, and there's the tall poppy syndrome, the Australians refer to that, where if, you know, poppies get too tall and you cut them back to size. And I think that that's what a good humorist does. So people get a little too full of themselves hmm. or too, I mean, I, I fed off Brian Mulroney getting full of himself for, yeah. what, 10 years. Actually, he's the gift that still keeps on giving. <laughs> 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 so I think that that's really the most important thing we do. And Rick is, is as good as anybody I've ever seen on television doing that. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. I mean, you know, uh, but tell them the lobster parallel. Oh, yeah, well, Terry said the, the tall poppy syndrome, where they cut the poppies down. But in Newfoundland, we have the lobster uh, Barrel because if you put the lobsters in the bar in the bucket or the barrel, you don't have to put a top on it because you don't have to worry about the lobsters. Because if one gets up and is ready to escape, another lobster will reach up and pull it back down. <laughs> and, uh, and I think that's you know that speaks a lot to the Canadian sensibility anyway. I mean, we are always tearing our own down. Yeah. And, uh, but also, if it's the role of the satirist sometimes, as Terry said, Brian Mulroney was a gift that kept on giving because it's very, you know, I think one character trait that Canadians have is we're fairly self-deprecating. And I think that as an individual, if an individual is self-deprecating, that's a very admirable character mm -hmm, trait, one mm -hmm. we all admire, and I think we have it as a country. And anytime anyone loses that ability to be self-deprecating, like our prime minister, and people, people get a whiff of that, because they'll fake it, they'll yeah. try to fake it, but if they get a whiff that they actually can't laugh at themselves, they take themselves too seriously, they think they're better than you, or yeah, they think oh. they're better than me, then, then it's game over. And, and if someone like Terry illustrates that point, and it sticks, then yeah, that could be fairly devastating. Yeah, yeah. Talk a little bit about, so I guess, inspiration for both of you. Um, Rick, you talked as, about how as a rantaholic, sometimes you'll find your at home just watching television. Um, is it as simple as that or wh where do ideas come from because then they have to go through the process of, of, of coalescing in your, in your case into something you can present on television that's funny, in your case into a graphic image. It's very different actually because you know Rick is, is it's a very complicated process for Rick where I sit there uh, I sit there and I watch the news and it, it's like low-hanging fruit these days. <laughs> And so I did pick something. Rolling onto your living room and floor, yeah. And I yeah. Sort of start to, I mean, it, I mean, I was, I was, it's nice to be here, but I was kind of sorry before because I just read online that the Parti Quebecois is now going after daycares with Bill 101, so I'm immediately, I gotta get home, I've gotta <laughs> deal with this. So, but it's very simple, my process, actually. Mm -hmm. The cartooning process is, uh, and I, I said right at the beginning of the talk, uh, that it's, going to be very effective online because it's still a very, it's a pad uh, and a pencil. It gets right down to that really. Sure, we can add bells and whistles, but that's what, and an idea. Uh, and that's what I do. 
I come up with an idea of maybe four or five cartoon ideas a week. That's what I do. And I'm watching stuff. But as my mother once said to me years ago, if you didn't do that, you'd have to get a real job. So <laughs> <laughs> and, and how quickly does that image occur to you? I mean, does it come up relatively quickly? My problem you done by most, 10 a.m.? Actually, it's, it's, it's pretty good. My, days, my problem most days is what not to draw. Uh -huh. But remember, I live in wonderful Montreal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is so rich with so many different levels of things going on and then we can always pick on Canadians and then if it's really quiet we pick on the Americans across the border and so right. there's always it, it's rare it's rare that I'm sort of puzzling over what I'm going to do yeah how do the rants transpire Rick? Um, you know it's pretty there's a pretty set schedule I don't even really think about the rant until Thursday because I write them Thursday night, I tape them on Friday, I have a live studio audience come in Friday night, then they air on Tuesday, they mm -hmm. used to air on Monday when it was the Mercer Report, but it's the, uh, the Monday Report, sorry, so it's the, it's the last possible moment mm -hmm. yeah. that I can do it, so it's, it's freshest. But, but, you know, sometimes I've had those moments where something has happened and I just, the rant just comes out, I just regurgitate it, it's like, Bleh! there it is. <laughs> Because it's only 90 seconds. And mm -hmm. we all have that experience sometimes where you see something and you react in a certain way and it comes out fully formed. Other times I can really struggle. I mean, I've had nights where I, you know, I've just gone and lay on the couch because I know there's like an hour and a half and I'm going to have to be back at the office. Now, luckily that doesn't happen that often. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's a real struggle. And mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, 90 seconds is not a lot of time really. So if you're, if you're trying to make a point, and you have to provide too much information, then you lose them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so it's, you know, it's, there's, there's no set rule. I mean, obviously I love it. Some of the best yeah. ones have come out just fully formed. Yeah. And that's what I aim for every week. But sometimes it's a long, tough process. Yeah, yeah. But then we also, I also have go-tos. Like if there's nothing that I can talk about or... Yeah. Um, then I will, I'll talk about why in God's name people don't know how to use elevators or yeah. escalators. And <laughs> that should be taught in school. Like, never mind, you know, sex edge. Like, teach the people that they can't, they can't stand in the left lane or, you know, it's yeah. just like being in a car. And, and then those things can become the most popular rants you've ever done and they're not political at all. They're just, mm -hmm. you know, evergreen. Mm -hmm. What are the greatest Canadian cartoonists ever? Duncan McPherson, yes. Toronto Star. Yes. Which is Brilliant man, uh, told me years ago when I, I he sort of he was really very helpful in coaching me along at the beginning. We also both drank a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Back then, it seemed to be quite fashionable yes, to do so. Yes. But nevertheless, yep. Duncan said to me once. He said, "If there's no news, draw a cartoon about there not being any news," and the light went off. But right. Whatever's yeah. in front of you, then deal with it, or whatever you're thinking about, deal with it. Yeah. So that's very similar to yeah. Yeah. People also become, it's, you know, there's, there's, today there's, uh, you know, Jim Flaherty brought down another budget, mm -hmm. and it's an omnibus budget. Mm -hmm. And right now, even though omnibus bills have been happening in Canada for a very long time, Cretchen was very good at it. In fact, one of the most eloquent people to ever stand in the House of Commons and decry them as an affront to democracy, in fact, was Stephen Harper. Yes. But every time someone gets elected, because they're so great, an omnibus bill, right? You pass an omnibus bill, you put 50 things in there, everyone in your party, if you have a majority, they have to vote for it or they lose their job. And uh, so you don't have to debate these things. And but, you know, the last omnibus bill drove me nuts and I was harping on about it, but mm -hmm. there's a learning curve in the country. And now it seems to me like Jim Flaherty's got this omnibus bill and everyone knows what this means. Yep. Everyone gets the idea of, oh, it's all or nothing. Yep. And I hope that, you know, that they've been a little too clever by half mm -hmm. and they've reached a tipping point and they won't get away with it at this point. Mm -hmm. But certainly it allows me to comment on it in a different way than if I don't have to start from scratch and go, it's not a budget, it's an mm -hmm. omnibus bill and explain the whole process process. And I never think that's my job. It's not right. like, yeah. I never think, you know, in my show, if anyone ever says, oh, we should do that, it's important. Like, we laugh them out of the room. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, ultimately, no, no, no. we're a comedy mm. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it certainly helps when, when you get to a point where people know what you're talking about. And you don't have to worry about that in the setup. And it, it also, the, 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 what the two of you have in common is, of course, is that your, your targets are, are usually our public elected officials. And, and um, I know that probably both of you, it's been suggested to you that you might be a little bit too tough. I know, Terry, you've heard this, that maybe that, that was a little bit too cruel. Um, talk a little bit about kind of like, are there lines anywhere to be drawn when you're criticizing public officials? <laughs> well, I have...
have rules. Or we can just move on. You know, I have my own rules. Yeah. You know, like I, I've had, uh, I, I, I had an experience where, you know, uh, someone contacted me, you know, and told me, you know, that this cabinet minister, who was very much a family values guy, and this was quite a while ago, you know, was like carrying on with this flight attendant, and, and I, I didn't even pay attention to it. And then they kind of sent me information that would suggest that it was highly likely, but I have no interest in that, personally. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I don't care what anyone is doing like that. And, yeah. and yeah, in fact, I agree. And, if, okay. and even if it became a story, I'd be, you know, maybe a joke might slip out if it became part of their narrative, but I, that's just my own personal thing. Yeah. It's like, you know, uh, you know, when Stephen Harper got elected, the first thing he did was, you know, they, and it was a press availability moment too, yeah. was Stephen Harper will be dropping his children off at school at this time, right? Mm -hmm. And he went and he shook hands with his daughter, remember? <laughs> yes. First the son and then the daughter. Yeah. And that was, huge hay was made out of it. Yeah. And, you know, if I was a cartoonist, I might have drawn it, but I never used it because I didn't want to use the footage because I thought I'm not putting their ch his children on TV. I see. And there's no way I could do it without showing the footage, and I just thought, I won't. So everyone has... Yeah. yeah. But everyone has their own... Everyone has just... You know, you just have to be able to live with yourself, basically. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so everyone has their own rules. But I never really worry about um, crossing a line. And in fact, sometimes when... I hear that something really bugs one of them yeah. more than anything. Well, then I'll like beat it like a red <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's wonderful. You're yeah, it's, it's we're fun. not. Uh, most people are trying to please authority figures. Mm -hmm. They're trying to please the boss. Mm -hmm. They're trying to please whoever it happens to be. Maybe their spouse. But we're, we're trying to sort of please people and get along. It's sort of the name of the game. But what we do is the opposite, and people are gleeful. Uh, over the fact that we do this, that we we, we do this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, the more powerful the individual, theoretically, the more we do this, the mm -hmm. more we. Yeah. Um, but Rick is absolutely right. It has to be on the public playing field. Yeah. Right. Sure. And the problem is, it gets a little murky with infotainment now, and sort of uh, th th there's an awful lot of stuff out there that I don't even read, and I wouldn't do, and I don't give a damn who's sleeping with who, unless. It's somehow affecting the public performance yes. of the individual. So he's absolutely right. We agree 100% on that. I've never done that stuff, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, I don't recall anything doing anything. So, but there's enough to play with out there on the public playing field to, you know, stay and work for a long time. You know, politicians and the, the powers that be that you talk about, it's very strange. I did a gig the other night, and it was a, it's a benefit for a cancer charity that I've been involved with because my friend started it in Ottawa, and it's a great night. And it's a small theater, it's 250 people can fit in this room. It's a songwriter circle, and mm -hmm. I do 25 minutes off the top. And it's, it's always a fabulous room. It's very interesting. It's a very non-partisan event. Um, you know, the leader of the opposition was there, Tom Mulcair, Olivia Chow was there, half of cabinet was there, including people like Vic Taves, and, Jay, you know, uh, and, and, and so probably 40% of the audience are MPs, mm -hmm. right? You got your, liber your big liberals, your big NDPs, blah, blah, blah. and it's very inside baseball. And they expect me to get up, get up there, and what I've done for five years is I acknowledge the people in the room, and then I roast them, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and it's, it's a gentle roasting, but it's mm -hmm. an opportunity for me to be totally inside baseball, right? Sure. I can talk about stuff in that room that only they know about, and, they, and it goes very well. And it's a pretty racy night, and I was saying all sorts of, I, I eviscerated Trudeau because he, the first time he couldn't make it up, make it, right? And went through the whole lot of blah, 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 and then I said, uh, oh, and Jason Kenney can't be here this evening. Uh, like Justin, he's busy running for leader. And, <laughs> you know, I would think at this point I would know when I was going to make an ooh line, mm -hmm. and all the toys are, ooh, ooh, <laughs> ooh, they're like, whoa. And the, the truth is, he is running for leader. Yeah. We all know he's running for yeah. leader. Yeah. Right? And they know he's running for leader. But the fact that I said it outside loud, they flipped. I never would have guessed in 100 years. There was like, out of 50 jokes that I had, I never would have guessed that would have been the one mm -hmm. that would have listed the reaction. But, which, it's, you know, you never know. There's another side to this coin, too. They yeah. love it. That, you know, I'd mentioned, sort of made mention of Paul Martin showing up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. They, they kind of love it. You yeah, know, that's parliament buildings are, are filled with walls of signed political cartoons. And so there's a status symbol, and actually only probably 50 people in Ottawa 
are recognizable enough to put in a cartoon, if that. Mm -hmm. The rest are sort of minor people who come and go. So I have actually received letters from executive assistants saying, when are you going to put the boss <laughs> in a cartoon? And I had a standard response. It's simple. Have him or her do something very stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to get, I'd always say back in the Cretchen years, I'd always say like I knew I was doing a good job that week when I would, you know, my Tory friends would call me and say, oh, you're clearly a liberal, like you're beating us up too much. And then my liberal friends would say like, you know, you're yes, clearly exactly. a Tory, you're beating yeah. us up too much. And then my NDP friends would say the same thing they say every week. It's like, why are you ignoring oh, us? <clears throat> yeah. Because I used to just find them boring, right? I mean, I like Jack, but it's, you know, back in those days, I just found them boring. And then with Alexa McDonough or whatever, they, were, they just bored me. So I would just not talk about them that mm -hmm. much and used to drive them to distraction. The same thing, like, how come we can't be on the show? Yeah. But you, you, you develop what we have. It's kind of, we have like a mutually parasitic relationship with the... Right. right? I mean, we need them, they need us. I mean, that, that's all there is to it. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the things you said uh, um, uh, when you were speaking earlier that was, that was very interesting is you said, you know, you, you, you'd much rather talk to the fisherman than the politician anyway, because they're just generally <clears throat> sort of more interesting. But you also seem to be moving away from having those figures of power on camera with you. Yeah, is that deliberate? Yeah, there's a couple of reasons. I mean,